This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to build and run your own website. More on that later. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to Easy Aroid Propagation. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to propagate a couple of different types of aroids. I have one climbing aroid. It's actually a philodendron. It has quite wide spaces in between the nodes on the plant. I also have for you a crawling philodendron because I think that a lot of people propagate those as well and those are a little bit different. I also have, and I get a lot of questions about this, I have an anthurium to show you to propagate as well. So if that sounds very interesting to you, then feel free to keep on watching. Also today I'm only using one tool and that is these, I don't know what you'd call them, clippers, shears, gardening scissors, whatever have you. You can use normal scissors perhaps, depends on the plant to be honest. Some people use scalpels for some really sort of intricate work. Literally today I'm doing a little bit slapdash but I want to show you how easy it is so I'm going to be using these. So the first thing I want to talk about today is probably the easiest out of the three, and that would be the Philodendron Glorious. But I have one here to show you, one that I've essentially chopped. <laughs> I've chopped it from my mother plant, that's why it's not attached to anything, because my mother plant is so big, it literally there'd be no way to show it to you. So what you do have is you have this lovely long vine, you'll notice quite big gaps actually between you know the petioles where the leaves come out, and a few aerials. We've got some good aerials on this one. I'm quite pleased with this one. And of course, yes, it is bodiless. That is it. There is just a little bit of vine. So let's take a closer look at this plant so we know how to propagate it. So the first thing that you should see is the huge gaps in between all the places where the leaves come out of this vine, all the aerial roots, all of everything. There's quite a lot going on. That's a good thing. It basically means we have a huge margin for error. We have loads of spare. This is really what you want when you're propagating. This is really what you want. You don't really want things quite tightly knit together, which we will see in a moment. Now, if you look here, what I'm doing is I'm actually removing the old leaf sheaf, right? It's just like a little crunchy bit of nothing, right? Basically, it's where the leaf did come out of once upon a time. But if I remove that and I show you quickly to the camera, you will see a little lump. That little lump there is a bud. And what happens with that bud, that is where the new plant is going to come out of when we chop it. As you can see there, there are other ones there where I've removed the leaf sheath as well. That is what we need to keep intact when we cut in between these spaces. So we need a bud, we need the aerial root and everything else. Now you don't have to remove these leaf sheaths, by the way. I literally wanted to do this today just to show you where the buds are, because this is gonna come into play a little bit later on when things get a little bit more difficult with you know your anthurium and stuff like that. What we need are the buds. If I cut this plant too close to the aerial roots, that's not really good. We really, really want that bud. That is what's gonna grow us a new plant. So we have some lovely little area roots. We have our bud and we're pretty much good to go. Like I say, this is literally, you can't go wrong with this guys. You just can't go wrong. All we need to do is cut in between these spaces. There you go. There's one last bud as well, ready for the chopping. In the case of a crawling plant such as a philodendron, this is a philodendron Dean McDowell actually, but it really doesn't matter what it is. The point is it's crawling. I just wanted to find something that was nice and long and you could really see the crawling behavior. Now, normally in the wild, these would grow pretty much horizontal to be honest, but obviously at the edge of the pot there, there's kind of nothing, but you can see that it's not really wanting to grow vertically. It wants to grow along to the side. The only real difference between this and the vining philodendron that I just showed you is that the spaces between the nodes, so the spaces between basically where all the leaves come out of the main vine, they're much closer together. You'll notice that straight away, they're much shorter. Are the rules the same? Yes. Absolutely. It just means that when you cut this plant to propagate it, it can be a little bit trickier and a little bit harder. This is where some people start using scalpels and things like that. Again, today, I'm not going to do that. We're going to do it completely slapdash because I genuinely want to show you that it's nothing to worry about and it's pretty easy. The final thing I'm going to be showing you today is, of course, how to propagate the anthurium. This is a gorgeous anthurium forgetti eye. Again, it doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't matter how thick and chunky it is on the base. It doesn't matter about any of it. It doesn't matter if it's velvety, not velvety. They're all pretty much 
the same. So I want to show you that. I'm going to show you where the buds come out of this one. This is probably the hardest of the three. I've definitely gone from easiest to hardest in this video. But if you look at what I mean, if you look at what you're seeing, you are basically seeing more of the same thing. The only thing I'll say about Anthurium is the buds are a little bit harder to detect, especially, to be honest, on one as small as this. Really, I could have chosen something a bit chunkier just for the sake of this video, but you will get what I mean when we get there. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. Squarespace have so many templates. They're not dated looking, they're not all the same with just the fonts and colors switched out, out, they're really unique. You're bound to find a layout that really appeals to you as a starting point. Then of course you can customize and go from there. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me guys. Back to the video. So let's start with the easiest of all, the Philodendron Glorious. If anyone wants to know, this is a hybrid of Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. Basically, Melanochrysum, it's gorgeous, it's long, it's kind of black really, and it's a good climber. Philodendron Gloriosum is a crawler, so more like the second type that we're about to see, but they were hybridized together. No idea who by probably by everybody, and they've made a really, really tough plant. And this plant just happens to propagate beautifully. And I don't mean in terms of how to propagate it. I mean in terms of the success after you do and after you propagate it and after you plant it. But anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm actually removing those leaf sheaths because underneath those leaf sheaths, we're going to be able to see the buds. Now, again, you do not have to do this at all. This is completely unnecessary. I'm doing it on this video so that you can actually see what these buds look like, just so you really understand, hey, this is how I propagate. This is what I'm looking at when I look at a vine with loads of leaves on it. Okay, that's the leaf. That's the petiole there. Those are the aerial roots. These are the buds. What you need is a bud. There's a lot of, should I say, debate about whether you can grow new plants from something called spent nodes. It's called spent node theory. That's how most people refer to it. And it's a big thing on the internet. Personally, I have been able to grow a plant from a propagation without any bud, honestly. And it did take a long time. I'm not gonna lie to you. It took about best part of a year, but I have done it. So I'm not so sure about the whole spent node thing. But hey, that's not even that's not even the purpose of this video. If you want a video on that, I'm happy to do one. So on this first cut I've just made, you can see plenty of area roots. You can see that bud there. And of course, we still have a petiole and a leaf attached. If you see the bud right there, that is where the new plant is probably going to come from. That is ready to just be planted up. Now you can trim either sides of that piece of vine there. It's kind of up to you. There's kind of a pro and con of doing it. It really depends on how you're going to plant it. Sometimes it actually helps to keep it on. One, if it starts to rot, you've got some sort of margin for error and you can just snip it off and you don't ruin anything that's left. Two, sometimes when you plant it, particularly if you're going to plant it in Lekka, it actually helps stabilize the plant in the pot. But as I say, it's kind of personal preference. So if you want to trim that right down, you can, but you don't have to. As you can see there, again, I have a leaf, I have a petiole, I have a node, I have my little bud, and I have my aerial roots. So I'm going to continue cutting down and the gaps between the, the nodes where the leaves are coming out, it's getting quite large now. I would definitely say that the one I'm picking up now, that probably needs trimmed. I won't lie, that's probably a little bit big. I think it's certainly too big for the pots that I have. But do I trim it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm recording this in post commentary and I have no idea if I trim it. Apparently I don't. Here I'm cutting a node without actually a leaf attached to it. 
just by whatever whatever happened there, I don't really know. But the theory is the same. You don't actually need a leaf attached to it. You can just plant the the propagation as it is, as I'm showing you there. We still have the aerial roots, we still have the bud. It's perfectly viable. I am trimming that down because I know that I'm gonna submerge this in a plant pot. Again, not necessary. Really depends on your situation and what you've got going on. But that there is ready to plant. And I promise you that's completely viable. And especially in the case of Philodendron Glorious, it will absolutely work. That will absolutely work. Doesn't for everything. Sometimes some plants are hit and miss, but that definitely works. I'm just making the final cut now. So I have two left. I have one, which is the one with the active growing point that I'm holding on to now. And then I have the other remaining one as well. Am I going to trim this one? I am going to trim it. Excellent, because that's really, really long. There you go. Now, every single segment of this Glorious is ready to pot up. I tend to do it in Lekka, planting it. I haven't shown you on this video, but I don't really think it needs it, if I'm honest. I think most of us know how to plant things. Plus, you can do this in water if you want. You can pop these in a, in a jar of water or something like that. That's absolutely fine. Obviously, if they don't fit, you can trim those, the bits of the vine either side there down. That's my little collection of propagations for Philodendron Glorious. Super easy plant. Oh, look at it. It's so sexy. Honestly, I completely recommend these. One of the easiest climbing philodendron to propagate. Tell me if I'm wrong. I absolutely love these plants. But that there is the easiest way of how to propagate a vining plant. So this is slightly harder. This is the Philodendron Dean McDowell. I am going to pull off those leaf sheaths just because I have done before to show you. And maybe, you know what, maybe in the case of a crawler, when it's this compact and you really want to see what you're doing, maybe it is best to pull them off, to be honest. It might just be easier because we've got less space to work with than what we did with the previous plant. Now, yes, I know these roots are a mess. You don't have to tell me in the comments. You can if you like, but I know they're a mess. They are literally a mess. This plant is a mess. So, can you see the bud there that I'm pointing to? Because that is what we need to not essentially slice through. I can slice on either side of it. There's obviously going to be any one way that's easier than another, but we do not want to cut that. We can see some lovely aerial roots throughout. So, the question is where to cut it. We're probably going to have an active growing point still on the right-hand side there, but we need to figure out where we're actually going to cut this. We could cut in any of these places, but... I think the optimal one is probably going to be near the edge of the pot because it just looks like there's the more space there. So that's obviously where I'm going to probably cut. Oh, what you can't see there that I'm about to show you is there is a bud that has previously not fully activated, but semi-activated. That's a little mini growth point there. As you can see, an old cut from an old propagation right there at the base too. That's basically, it's probably what's activated that bud, to be honest. And it's possible that when we cut this again in a second, that that might activate over time. Or a new bud might activate. Who even knows? Who even knows? So I'm just getting ready to cut this. I'm pulling out. I've just realized I've got aerials that are just sort of tucked away. So we're just going to get rid of them so we keep them viable. And I love it when plants have aerials like this because honestly... Your plant is just, it's just got 10 times more chance of surviving because there's so much viable root on the bottom. Again, it's not necessary, but I must say, if you're going to propagate any aroid, if you've got aerial roots that are alive, again, they don't have to be this long. I mean, that's that's quite excessive, but you know what I mean? If you've got at least an inch of good, healthy aerial root, you will find that your propagations do so much better, so much better. You can see the bud there really, really clearly. And to be honest, I, I feel like it's really obvious probably where I'm about to cut this plant. What I am doing here, and this is not necessary, but I'm actually pulling out a little bit extra aerial root because in that leaf sheath, and this does sometimes happen, I'm sure you may have had it happen with a house plant, you can just get cheeky little aerial roots coming through there and they just sort of grow up the side of the petio. So all I'm doing is very, very gently, oh, I'm not even gently, am I removing that completely? Yeah, I'm moving it completely. I understand what I've done now. Apologies, guys. I am recording this post-commentary and I'm, I'm having a great time, if I'm honest. So <laughs> I'm pulling this off, guys, because it's not the best looking leaf. I'm probably going to lose some of it propagating anyway. And it's really giving me the space to make a really, really nice cut. And just to get a better prop, there's a bud there, see? I really, really want the space to just get that done. It doesn't really matter about one leaf. We're going to grow entire plants from it. 
And the new plant that grows from this is going to start smaller anyway. So all you're going to get is one big leaf followed by a lot of smaller leaves. So I'm working out where to cut. Oh, it's not where I thought I was going to go. So I'm going to make a cut here just to leave that bud behind on the original plant. Rather than give it to the new plant, I'm allowing it to stay with the old plant. I probably didn't need to remove that leaf, but honestly, I wanted to do it just to show you that it is fine to do. There are no rules here. There's not a lot you can do, guys, that's that's wrong. And that that is part of the reason why this video is slapdash. I don't I don't think it needs to be an exact science at all. Just chop it. Just chop it. As long as you've got a node and some aerials, you are good to go. And there you have it. There's the new growth there that is small anyway, but that there is a cluster of plants that can be just grown up. I could cut that again there where I'm pointing. I'm not going to. I don't really feel the need to. I think it would just be better to start off where it is. Plus, I'm I'm not really a fan of doing a head cutting where it is literally just the newest leaf. I do find, if I were to make that incision, I do find that those tend to abort themselves. They just It just doesn't have enough energy or anything like that. So I do like to keep at least one other leaf with it. I'm absolutely not a fan of just lobbing off just the growth point. I don't think it's a good idea. So that right there is a cute little plant that will absolutely not fail because it just so happens that Philodendron Dean McDowell is also tough as nails absolutely tough as nails. I don't even think you can kill these. They they are a bit gangly when they grow, but generally speaking, they are super tough. So that is not the sexiest, but what we can do is if we just cut this off here, we get another little chunk in the same way that I did with the Glorious. I just want to make sure that I keep that bud at all costs. So I'm going to cut that a little bit lower. So now I have a little chunk I have some very, very decent aerial root that's turned into, well, almost full root, hasn't it really? And I have my little bud. I have everything I need. So although it doesn't look pretty and I'm removing a little bit of debris, as long as I plant that sort of horizontally along the surface of my substrate, see there is that little bud, then I will get a new plant out of it. So this trunk is pretty good because it has three growing points. There's the third there. So there's first, second and third. This can't fail. This cannot fail. So as long as you plant it horizontally, like I'm about to show you now, so that it's sat along the surface of the soil like that, or lecker, whatever you want to do, that'll grow no problem. It could activate more than one growing point from a bud, but we only need one. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. It can be cut again at a later date. Do not worry too much. And my top tip, if you're worried about how much to cut, don't cut chunks too small. Just cut something with two or three buds on it if you're worried about it, if it really concerns you. Don't make, you know, one inch chunks with a node on each. Just just be chill. Just leave two or three on. Now, the final thing I want to show you, and this is super quick, this is Monstera adansonii, and it's it's gangly. I mean, it's technically variegated, but as you can see, it's it's not done so well. It's grown up towards my grow lights, and it's, it's bleached to high heaven. But I just wanted to show you, this is exactly the same. This does not need going over again. We have the node. We have the aerial root and bosh, that is all we do. Now, this probably definitely needs trimmed on either side of the node because it's, these can get a bit long. As you can see, this this is not a great example of an Adansonii. This is something super leggy. And of course, the gaps in between where the leaves, you know, leave the main vine, they can be a lot smaller than this. But this just makes a great example to show you. So yeah, no different at all. I'm not even going to cut this full plant because there's just no point. You do get the idea exactly the same that we covered with the Philodendron Glorious. Trim the either side of the vine if you want. For example, this one, this is super long. That is completely unnecessary. I hope I trim this. <laughs> but it's exactly the same. And of course, you will get your growth point and everything else. If you're wondering where the growth point is on one of these, it is again on the opposite side to the petiole. It's always a really good place to look. So if you're ever wondering, now you know where to look. Look on the opposite side to the petiole. I've pulled the leaf off there just to show you absolutely, but I don't know why I did that, to be honest, because I don't need to. So, Anthurium. As I mentioned before, this is Anthurium forgetii. It is a personal favorite of mine. They're absolutely fantastic. And you don't even have to propagate this plant. You can actually let it pop. It's one of few Anthuriums that does go a little bit crazy and it propagates itself. But if you do want to propagate it, I just want to point out that honestly, I know Anthurium intimidates a lot of people, but I promise you the concept is the same. 
it's honestly the same. The only thing you probably need to do is just leave a larger gap. Now, I'm just going to pick a gap here because I know I have some aerials at the top. They're quite tough because it's anthurium and they are a little bit different to the root base at the bottom, but it's absolutely fine. I'm not even looking for a bud because I've actually chopped off quite a lot there, like there will be a bud, but I will show you where the bud is because I think I just have to, once again, remove the odd leaf sheath because it does hide a multitude of fun. So I'm just gonna pull that off. Again, completely unnecessary. This is just if you need to know where your buds are. But if you just leave about two inches, perhaps, on average of any anthurium, then you should have a bud and you will be absolutely fine. Again, it's not something I would do, um, cutting these without aerials, especially if you don't have high humidity. I have very high humidity in the setting I'm in. I think when I recorded this yesterday, I was in about 75%, so I'm fine. But if I could just zoom you in, you should see the world's tiniest bud. <laughs> and I mean, it is tiny. I totally get that. And this is why Anthurium intimidate people a little bit more because everything is super, super close. It's not as easy to tell what's going on. And I think Anthurium are generally out of the three things, Anthurium are harder to grow. You can see where this has been cut previously, of course. That's why the base is very gnarly. There is another teeny tiny little bud. You can see that it's grown from a chunk previously. So it's kind of showing you how the buds actually work there. That's why it looks really weird. It's been cut several times, as you can see. But again, as long as we have a bud, we're good to go. A bud and I would say some root. So I'm just going to cut this here because it just, I don't know why, it just feels right. This is what I do in the shop. I don't overthink things. A lot of people watch things like my repotting videos and they're like, how do you know where to cut? How do you make the decisions? I don't really. I just feel it out based on what that specific plant is doing, i.e. how much root it's got. That little chunk there has more than enough root to make a plant and to just pot and to just wait for a bud to form. It's really not a big deal. So that would just get plotted up like it never happened. Of course, I would do the same thing with the base as well. That's not a problem. I'm sure it's got more than enough buds on there because I have left some of the new growth as well. And of course, the top is, the, the top, you know, with the leaf on it, that's obviously the prettiest. And that's something, if you think about it in terms of my shop, that's obviously the one that's getting sold first because it's already established. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with those two bits that are left. As gnarly as they may be, the concept is the same. It's just a little bit more tricky because everything is so pushed together, so pushed together. But that, that there is more than enough. Of course, we still have the active growth point at the top there as well. Just to take a second to compare the first plant with this last plant as well, just so you can see what I'm talking about. They do both have basically the same stuff, guys. They have a petiole, they have a leaf, they have what we're going to call a vine, they have buds. They just work slightly differently, just in the way that one is more compact than the other. Both gorgeous plants, though. These literally are two of my favorites. Oh, they're so sexy. They're so sexy. So that was a rather chatty, easy way of propagating aroids. Again, it's not just philodendron, monstera, anthurium. I hope this little guide was helpful. I hope it allows you to just not get too worried about things like this because I know people do. It really depends on how long you've had your plant, what it means to you. Do you want to cut it? Are you cutting things to sell? Is it just because something's too big, too leggy? There's many, many reasons why we propagate our plants. There is no wrong reason at all. And I just want you to have fun with it. Don't overthink it. Honestly, I just used a pair of scissors and I went with it. So I hope this little guide was useful. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I make content that you enjoy. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would absolutely love it if you could join the family. That's it, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.